you missed the last RX rounds, you missed a lot because we spoke about an approach to the patient with undifferentiated shock. This is a monthly review that we're going to be doing for those videos. And if you missed the video and you want to watch it and you're an all access member, head over to the folder, the RX rounds and check out those videos. Now we do these every single month and we're going to start having these reviews to start to hammer in some of these concepts and have a little bit of space repetition. Shock is a state where there's inadequate distal tissue perfusion. And that's a thing that we learn in medical school and that's all well and good. But how do you tell when a patient comes in if there's shock? They might be compensated. Their vital signs might actually look normal when they're in fact in shock. So vital signs, they're not always so good. We look for things like encephalopathy. If the person has chest pain or elevated troponins or they're tachypnic because they have a metabolic acidosis, abdominal pain for hyperperfusion, elevated creatinine for renal hyperperfusion. And don't forget about your physical exam, looking for things like decreased capillary refill. Those can be really subtle signs and very, very important for your patients. Okay. You've identified you have a patient in shock. Again, it might not be obvious whether or not they're in hypovolemic, obstructive, cardiogenic, or distributive. So we need an approach. And the approach is to remember tank, the pump and the pipes, the tank being your intravascular volume, the pump being your cardiac output, and the pipes being how much arterial vasoconstriction, although we'll also put venoconstriction there as well. And your patients might not always come in labeled as the type of shock that they have, but you have to know the type of shock that you're dealing with because the things that you do aren't always just bolusing with two liters of fluid. That could be harmful to someone who has some LV dysfunction. Breaking things down into looking at the tank the pump and the pipes can be very helpful to your approach for the patient. The way we're going to use this is with ultrasound. And remember our mnemonic that we use for ultrasound. We talk about a high map. We talk about the heart. We talk about assessing the intravascular volume status. We talked about looking at Morrison's pouch. We looked at the aorta. And then we looked at the pulmonary system. Those are the things that you need to evaluate as you're looking at your patient. So remember that mnemonic when you're looking at your patient and then try to figure out what's wrong with your patient. If you're still not sure what's going on with the patient, you'll still be able to figure out the problem with perfusion in your patient. Namely, is it a problem with the tank? Are they hypovolemic? Is there a problem with the pump? Or is there a problem with the pipes? And even if you don't know the exact cause, you could still fix that individual problem while you're doing more testing. Maybe it's diagnostics, maybe it's labs, maybe it's whatever. But you now are starting to correct the hypoperfusion that that person is having and improve their morbidity and mortality by decreasing organ ischemia. Okay, so that's your brief review of last month's lecture. Don't forget, we're going to be doing another RX rounds at the end of February. And this time it's the people's choice. So I'm going to be sending out three topics and give you a poll that you can click on the one that you want to hear and we'll make sure that topic happens. Thank you for being part of the RX community. And I will see you at the end of the month with our next installment of the RX rounds. Thank you.